GarageBand has a free plugin that is perhaps the best compressor and expander plugin that you can use. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to find it and how to use it. Let's go. Yes, we're talking about the Dynamics processor here in GarageBand. If you're new to GarageBand, check out the link down in the description. That's my GarageBand Essentials playlist. It's got all the basics to help get you up and running. Here in our effects, you've got things like the compressor, you've got the tremolo, the echo, the reverb, the flanger. You've got a bunch of different plugins you can use. But did you know that there are some extra additional free plugins that are the Apple AUV3 plugins? Well, we're talking about one of those in this video. Here's a GarageBand project for my song called Goats. I've got some vocals here and this is what we're going to use to demo this to add the plugin. We simply go up the top here to the little mixer icon, tap on plugins and EQ, hit the edit button and we need an empty slot here. Now the effect EQ doesn't do much so if you don't have an empty slot just delete that one and then hit the plus button. Now instead of using your effects here you're going to go over to the audio unit extensions and scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see we have all of these Apple plugins. I cover all of these in another video which is also linked down below but for this one we want this the AU Dynamics processor. What's that? You don't have these plugins. Well that's an easy fix. All you need to do is go to your settings app here. So jump over to settings, scroll down over here on the left and until you find GarageBand, you're gonna to have to keep scrolling if you've got lots of apps like me until you get to the G and then tap on GarageBand there. Scroll down over here on the right until you get to this one. Enable Apple Designed Audio Unit Extensions. Turn that one on. Now, you'll need to close GarageBand. Come to GarageBand, close it by sliding up and flicking it away and then tap on it again. Reload it and you'll find that you have these audio unit extensions in your plugins ready to add. So here we have the vocal. We've got that soloed here. I'm going to turn it off to start with so you can listen to these raw vocals. I'm going to hit the play button and this is what this song sounds like. I find it hard to be okay. So why would I want to use a compressor and an expander with this vocal or with any other track? Well, that's what we're going to explain now. So let's turn this plugin on by tapping that one there, tapping on the plugin here to go into our settings. Now, the cool thing about this is that they've updated these recently and you've got a complete visualization of your compression and your expander here, which makes it really easy to use. You've got attack and release and gain along the side here. Your output levels there. You've got the ability to change your threshold as well as the ratio for both your compressor and your expander. Does that mean nothing to you? It doesn't matter because we're going to explain it for you right now. Let's start with compression because that's something you've probably heard about putting a compressor on your vocals. Now what a compressor does is it actually turns down the peaks. It gives you a more level performance because it brings down those peaks and brings everything else up to a more consistent level. You do lose some dynamics but you get a more consistent volume. Now GarageBand has a compressor. You've probably used it. It's right here. There's nothing wrong with it. It works well. But if you want more control and more visibility of your compression, let's turn that compressor off and let's dive in here to the Dynamics processor. Now, without touching anything, let's just hit play and see what this is doing. I find it hard to be okay. With so it's not actually doing anything right now. Why? Because we haven't set anything, but you can see this little red arrow was sitting up there and it was actually showing the level on this diagonal here. And what we can do is we can actually adjust the threshold by pulling this down and up and then up again. You can see there the compression threshold is up the top there. You've also got this one, which is your headroom. Now, it's a little bit confusing because this is pretty much your ratio. So up here, you've got a lower ratio. And as you bring this down, it's going down to like an infinite ratio. If you don't know much about compression, check out the other videos all about compression down in the description. So let's play this again now and start adjusting the threshold to see if we can start adding some compression here. We'll hit play. I find it hard to be and drag okay down. With all the things that are happening. And you'll hear it's gone quieter. Now you might be thinking, Pete, I thought compression actually increased the volume. Well, it doesn't. It actually pushes down the peaks of your volume. And the great thing about this one is it actually shows you how much. See that little red triangle that pops up there when I hit play? And in this world, 
that's showing you how much it's actually compressing because it's rolling off, it's removing those peaks of the volume. Now, if we want to give it a little bit lighter compression, we can again move it up or we can bring it all the way down here to a straight line across and this is gonna give it that real hard compression. Let's play here. but it's really quiet, right? So with the Dynamics Processor, you will need to use your master gain. So let's dial this into a compression level that I might go with, sort of a medium level here with the threshold set there, and we'll dial up this master gain and bring the volume back up to a more acceptable level. Hey, all the news that is fake, all the walls that they make, and there's one thing that I am sure of. That's a bit better, right? Just pulling off the top there, and then we're bringing the volume up. So remember, compression brings the top down and then pulls up the quieter part so that you get a more level performance overall. So that's your compression. You've got your attack and release over here as well. Attack is how quickly the compressor will kick in. So if you want it to kick in a bit slower, you turn that up. If you want it faster, you turn it down. Release the exact opposite. That's when it starts compressing. So when you see this red triangle appear, how quickly it goes away. When the volume drops down, how quickly will it do that? So for instance, if you wanted, say, a really fast attack, but you wanted a slow release, you would drive this one up here. And this way, once it starts compressing, it won't let go until the volume really starts dropping off. Let's uh, play this again and uh, take a look and a listen. And I find it harder day by Day. So there we're getting a much harder sort of harsh compression there, which is going to work in with our mix. Now, when you're compressing something using Dynamics Processor or anything else, you want to bring it back into your mix because compressing things in isolation doesn't really work for you. So let's unsolo this by tapping here and bring it back into our mix and uh, take a listen to how this sits in with the rest of our song. With all the things that are happening. Not bad. We'll need to do some balancing there with the volume and the master gain there just to bring it up. But again, the reason I love this is that you can see exactly what's going on there. If we wanted it to be more harsh and you can really see what it's doing, we can drive this all the way down and then turn our makeup gain up here. Let's uh, take a listen to this. Where are our vocals? Well, we've turned the threshold down so much that we can't even hear it. So this is where you need to be a little bit careful. So let's hit play again and bring this back up a bit. Because remember, this top end is really just, it's just not going to hear any sound when you get above that level. So instead of turning it down, it'll turn it off, which brings us nicely in a nice segue to the expander. So what is an expander? How do we use that? Let's take a look. Now, if you're familiar with a noise gate, the expander section of the Dynamics Processor is going to be really simple to understand. If you're not familiar, again, more videos all about noise gates down below. But in simple terms, a noise gate is like the opposite of a compressor in that as soon as it gets below a certain threshold, it'll actually turn the volume off down there. So it's handy if you've got like noisy backgrounds or you've got some click or you've got some bleed in your microphone or some humming guitars you can actually add this. So we've got very similar buttons and, and dials that we can use down here. So here is our expansion threshold. So we can set this to a certain level and then we have this one to turn it down or off. So again, it's the same as this. So if you wanted a complete kind of square there, that would mean that anything above that volume, you don't hear and anything below this volume, you don't hear. But generally with compression, you do want to be able to hear it at least a bit above there. And the same with your expansion. You want to hear a little bit. So the reason this is better than a noise gate is when you're not hearing the sound below that level, instead of it going to zero volume, it's going to start ramping off that volume. If that makes no sense to you, let's look at a practical demonstration right now. So let's hit play on this vocal. I find it hard to be okay. 
with all the things that now what you're seeing here is that the volume is all the way up here so this expansion setting that i have down here is not doing anything so to actually demonstrate this i'm going to bring the compressor up here and bring this expander more into play because this little red triangle when this goes below a certain level you'll see what an expander actually does i find it hard to be okay with all the things can you hear it kicking in and out there? Every time the volume goes below that threshold, it goes to silence. Now, just to really reinforce how this works, let's bring that threshold up and let's make it like a brick wall here. So this will make it more like a noise gate. Nothing. Bring it down. With all the things that are happening in this world. Now, would you ever use it like that? Of course not. But you can see what this is doing here, that as soon as the volume goes below that threshold, it'll stop having the volume there. Now, you wouldn't use it like that, but if you want to use this more like a bit of a noise gate, we would bring the threshold down here and then just ramp it off like that. So this way, when we play this vocal again, anytime you get those sort of background noise or just the breathing in between, that's where it's going to turn the volume down. Let's uh, see if we can get this in the right spot. I find it hard to be okay with all the things that... So see how when, it, when I had that breath, it just dropped down there. Now, we might even want to go a little bit more aggressive on that. Let's try that line again. I find it hard to be okay. No, you can hear it kicking in and out there, can't you? So you might want to just make it a little bit less obvious and bring it down a little bit and just a bit of trial and error here to find the right spot for something like this. I find it hard to be okay with all the things that I and then of course that we've got that in there we can then adjust the top end here so you're basically creating this zone where you want your dynamics to be the reason it's a dynamics processor is you're removing those low end and you're potentially removing the top end now bear in mind you can crush it too much you can create too much compression and too much expansion here meaning you're going to remove the dynamics from your song entirely and you're going to end up sounding something uh, very weird like this i find it hard to be okay which is obviously not going to be very pleasant but if you use this in moderation it's actually really cool because you get that complete control visualization of your attack your release your gain and you can actually see what's going on if you compare this to your traditional compressor compression you're just not able to get that same level of control yes you got the same buttons and dials there but you can't really see what that's doing to your sound. And even though I say mix with your ears, not with your eyes, sometimes having that visual indicator can really help. Now, we've just showed this on your vocals, but you can, of course, use this with guitars, with drums, with keys, with any sounds here in your GarageBand project. It works exactly the same way. It's a lightweight plugin, meaning it's not going to use a whole lot of overheads or processing power. It's completely free. It's able to be used by anyone using GarageBand on your iPad or your iPhone. I hope you found this useful. If you want to learn more about all these plugins, don't forget more videos linked down in the description, and I'll see you next time.